this the dog that I spoke to you about before that was on the ventilator and with the GDV and aspiration pneumonia and that kind of thing had, with the terrible pneumothorax. Um, we're putting in a chest tube now, and we've had the smaller myelar chest tubes, but they got kinked in the sub Q space, and so we're going now with a Jackson Pratt chest drain. And note that these always have to be placed surgically. Um, and you can place them percutaneously like this. Um, so what I'm doing is I've made a little skin incision. I'm going in about the ninth intercostal space and I'm advancing it underneath the skin up about three or four spaces. And then I'm turning the right angle 90 degrees so that it can pop through the intercostal space here. Okay, and then I'm going to advance it, pull out the right angle, and then I can just advance it subcutaneously to the point that the white silicone portion is inside the chest. So that's what I've done here. So now that's inside, and this is open to the chest. So now I'll just get a three-way stopcock. I'll pinch this off so we don't create too much more of an pneumothorax. Get a three-way stopcock, connect it to the drain and I'll get a 60 mil syringe and I can start draining out the air from the chest cavity and hopefully we will get a lot. So I'm just putting a three-way stopcock on here. Attaching the syringe, opening and then I should Make sure that it's not kinked. Yes, yeah, so I'm getting some air out now. Not as much as I would have expected. Unless Lorna drained it all completely. Any chance of that? Um, possible. I got probably a liter and a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject some air into the chest just to blow off any soft tissue and then I'll aspirate again and see if I get the same amount of air that I put in which I, I am getting about that same amount so that suggests so I'll try that again so I'll take 50 mils of air and in, inject that into the chest and then aspirate it back out and see if I get the same 50 out which I'm getting about that so that tells me that the chest is negative at this point so now I've turned it off to the patient and I'm going to get some a white clip here. Now if we're going to use an instrument to clamp off the chest tube, you don't want to clamp it off like this because you can create a hole in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to use the instrument, the hemostat like that and that clamps it over really nicely without damaging the tube. And then I'm going to pass this white clip, which is from intravenous tubing or arthroscopy tubing, and then apply my syringe back on. And now that I'm confident that I've occluded the tube, I can remove that again. So now I'm going to take my OPDS and I'm just going to do a cruciate suture. And the reason why we want to do a cruciate suture around the tubing is because sometimes you can have air that leaks underneath uh, or through the, uh, through the incision in the skin and then leaks around the tube back into the chest cavity. And so I always put in a cruciate suture like this. We have to remember to take that out when we go to remove this tube. So that is going to keep any air from leaking in around the tube back into the chest cavity. And then, where are my scissors? And then I'm just going to do a finger snare. That's right. And when I put in a finger snare, I usually do kind of a little purse string around the opening again to further prevent air from leaking 
around the tube opening back into the chest. So that's my purse string and I'll just tie that with a square knot. And then I'll put in my finger snare. Let's see what I've done here. And then I'll show you a trick. If I get Molly to come around the front here, just walk around the front this way. And this is, I'll show you a trick that I bet a lot of you don't know, which is that after you've done a finger snare, you can adjust the tubing. And I'll show you how we can do that. So let me get this tight. Just do one more throw here. Now say you find out that your tube is not far enough in or if it's too far in. What we can do is just, so we've got the finger snare up like this. We bunch up the finger snare. Down like this and then you can adjust the tube in or out like that and then you just spread the finger snare back out again um, and it locks it back in place so that's our chest tube i'm just going to try one more time to make sure that it's negative now we've got some more air i oh, know i have it open to the atmosphere so that chest is negative now and i'll try injecting another 50 mils of air in and then back out and seeing if we get back to the same 50, which we do. So we're confident that we've got a good chest tube and that the um, chest is negative. So that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, please post them on the message board below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream.